probably interested in this program because you suffer from back pain. Perhaps you're uncomfortable right now. On the other hand, maybe you feel fine today, but live in fear of an attack. No one who hasn't had a back problem can fully appreciate and understand what it's really like. That little twinge that becomes a full-blown episode of excruciating pain. In fact, muscle pain can be as devastating as pain caused by structural or neurological disorders. Then again, you might be one of many who suffer from constant or periodic pain for years. If so, you probably cut back on many of the things you like to do. Chances are you've tried a variety of things to help your back without much luck. Every day, six and a half million Americans have back pain. In fact, year in and year out, back problems are the second most common reason people visit their doctor. Aside from personal misery, Back pain extracts a tremendous toll on our economy every year. Even if you've never had a single minute of back pain, the chances are eight in 10 that someday you will. I've spent the last 10 years helping people get rid of back pain, and I would like to help you too. We'll begin by spending the next 15 minutes or so sharing with you some valuable information and do some actual testing of your back. Then I'll take you through a three-stage, six-week course to put you on the road to a healthier back. This easy-to-use method will help nearly everyone who suffers from back pain. Before we get into the exercises, though, I would like first to provide you with their medical and scientific basis so that you will have a good understanding of what they're all about. Some years ago, Barbara Stimson, professor of orthopedic surgery at the Columbia College for Physicians and Surgeons, organized a back clinic at the Columbia Presbyterian Hospital Medical Center in New York City. This back clinic conducted a study carried out by a group of physicians representing a variety of medical disciplines that dealt with the back. The purpose of the study was to determine the major cause of back pain. The doctors examined 3,000 back pain patients who were being treated in the greater New York City area. The surprising results of the research were that 83% of all back pain was of muscle origin and only 17% was some form of disease or pathology. The researchers discovered that back pain is mainly caused by weak abdominals, emotional stress, and the lack of flexibility in the muscles from the base of the head to the heel. Dr. Hans Krauss, an outstanding authority in rehabilitative and sports medicine, was asked to design an exercise format to correct those muscle deficiencies. In a follow-up study of those that adhere to the exercise design, Better than 82% had excellent results. Problems which cause chronic backache or interfere with the healing of back muscle pain are mostly the result of tension and lack of exercise, which goes hand in hand with our sedentary lifestyle. The person who sits in a car to drive to work, sits at the desk all day, sits to drive home, and sits down in front of the television soon loses muscle strength, flexibility, and has no outlet for reducing the tensions that build up in the muscles during the course of the day. Once your muscles get out of shape, tension and pain often occur. These minor back aches make it even more likely to take things easy, which means even less activity. 
Even worse, weak muscles set you up for back injuries and makes recovery more of a problem. Before you know it, you are caught in a vicious cycle. Pain and discomfort lead to less activity, which leads to still more discomfort. Your back almost never feels really good. And pain has become a way of life, something you've taken for granted. In the largest scientific study of back pain ever done, the YMCA evaluated the exercises presented in this program. The participants were nearly 12,000 back pain sufferers, both men and women, who had suffered for an average of eight years. The results were most encouraging. Over 80% of the participants reported a reduction or elimination of pain in six weeks or less, including those who previously had back surgery but still suffered pain. And in a follow-up study of the people who continued to do the exercise after completing the six-week course, almost everyone reported improvement. I know of no other method which matches that kind of success. With results like these, it's no wonder that the program is supported by hundreds of physicians, insurance companies, corporations, workmen's compensation agencies, and government bodies. So if your doctor has approved your participation in the test and the exercises on this tape, there is every reason to expect that you too will finally be on the road to a healthier back. Let's begin by evaluating your back. If you have no conditions that prevent you from exercising, the six tests developed by Dr. Hans Krauss and Dr. Sonia Weber will give us a good indication of why your back hurts. These tests are designed to evaluate the minimum muscular strength and flexibility in relationship to your height and weight. A word of caution, don't take the test to start the exercise program if your back pain at the moment is at its peak of intensity. Wait until your discomfort begins to subside. If you think any particular test might cause you discomfort, don't do it. Or if you begin to experience discomfort while taking the test, stop and we'll move on to the next one. Before taking the test, you'll need someone to assist you, and you should have a couple of pills handy, a measuring tape, and the Krauss-Weber scorecard. Start by making sure you are comfortable. For some of the tests and the exercise which follow, you'll need to lie down on a mat or a folded blanket. Don't lie on a hard floor as that will make you uncomfortable and may make your problem even worse. Also, you should wear clothing that allows you plenty of freedom for movement. Take off your shoes, but leave your socks on. Let's take a moment to get ready and we'll take the first test. Now, if you will, lie down on your back, hands behind your neck, legs out straight, ankles touching. This first test measures the minimum strength of your hip flexor muscles. When I tell you to, I want you to raise your legs until your heels are 10 or 12 inches from the floor and hold them there until I tell you to put them down. Are you ready? Now raise your legs, not too high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now put your legs down. If you held this position for 10 seconds, give yourself a score of 10. If you held it for six seconds, give yourself a score of six, and so on. Now, while in this very same position, have your partner hold you down at the ankles. Move your hands to the side of your ears with fingertips pointing to the top of head. For test number two, we're going to ask you to do a straight leg sit-up which measures the combined strength of your hip flexing and abdominal muscles. Are you ready? All right, now see if you can do a sit-up. Okay, very fine. Now lie down on your back again. If you came up into a full sitting position, you scored a 10. If you could only get up halfway, score a 5, and so on. To get ready for test number three, bend your knees and place your heels as close to your seat as you can without putting any strain on your knees. Now have your partner hold you down firmly at the feet. Now with the hands at the sides of your ears again, fingertips pointing to the top of the head, when I tell you to, we're going to test your abdominal muscles by doing another sit-up. All right now, come up. Now go back down. I think you'll notice that this test was a little bit more difficult to do than the previous one. 
That's because bending the knees eliminated the help of your hip flexing muscles. If you could do a full sit-up, you scored a 10. If you're just able to lift your shoulders off the floor, a 3 or 4 will do. If you came up into a half-sitting position, you scored a 5. Now roll over on your stomach, placing two pillows under your hips. This will make it comfortable. Your helper should place one hand on your lower back and the other at the back of your heels, hands behind the neck. We're now ready for test number four, which measures the strength of your upper back muscles. When I tell you to, I want you to raise chin and chest just enough to clear the floor. Do not hyperextend the back. Hold it there until I tell you to come down. See if you can hold for 10 seconds. Are you ready? Raise. Not too high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come down. If you held this position for 10 seconds, give yourself a score of 10. If less, score the number of seconds you held this position. The fifth test measures the strength of your low back muscles. Have your partner stabilize your body with one hand on your shoulders and the other at your low back at the sacrum. When I tell you to, I want you to raise your legs from your hips, keeping knees locked. Lift straight legs off the floor, just enough to clear the floor and hold it there until I tell you to stop. Are you ready? Okay, raise your legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put your legs down. If you held this position for ten seconds, give yourself a score of ten. If less, score the number of seconds you held this position. Now, if you will, stand up for me, please, off the mat. We'll do test number six, which measures your overall flexibility from the base of the head to the heel. Bring your legs together and keep your knees locked. When I tell you to, I want you to bend forward at the waist and see if you can touch the floor with your fingers or come down as far as you comfortably can. I underscore comfortably. Don't strain, bounce, or use jerky movements while doing this test. If you cannot touch the floor, that's okay. Have your partner measure the distance from the floor to the tip of your middle finger. Are you ready? All right, now bend forward at the waist. Don't strain. Come down as far as you comfortably can. Hold it there. Have your partner take the measurement. Now bend your knees and slowly come back up. If you touch the floor with your fingers, score it with a letter T for touch. If you didn't touch the floor, score in minus inches the distance from the floor to the tip of your middle finger. Now that you've taken the test, let's take a moment and see what we've learned about your back. If you couldn't pass some of the tests, it indicates weakness or tension of the muscle in question. You're more likely to have had difficulty with tests three and six because studies show that half of those tested are unable to do them. If you passed all the tests, that's great. Remember, however, that these are only minimum tests of strength and flexibility of your key body support muscles. I suggest that you test yourself again at the end of the six-week program to measure your progress. The exercise you're about to do will make you stronger, more flexible, and you should suffer less pain as a result. Furthermore, if you enjoy athletic activities, you'll perform better and run less risk of injury. A good way to get started is to learn some good habits for daily living. For some people, these few things alone will eliminate their back problem. Most of us sit several hours a day. Generally speaking, a hard chair surface is better than a soft one, and the chair should have a back support. Of great importance is the relationship of your knees to your hips. The lower the knees are in relation to the hips, the more stressful it is on your back. Consequently, your knees should always be a little higher than the hips. If you have to sit in a chair that's too high, a telephone book or a similar object can be used to elevate the knees. When driving the car, move the seat closer to the steering wheel to slightly elevate your knees. Concerning sleep, there are several important items to keep in mind. 
First, a very firm sleeping surface is best. Sleep on your side if you can. Sometimes a pillow between the knees will make you more comfortable. If you can only sleep on your back, then you must sleep in the bent knee position with pillows under your knees to support the legs. Legs out straight cause a concaveness in the lower back which becomes very uncomfortable. Sleeping on your stomach is even more stressful than sleeping on your back with your legs out straight. If this is the only position in which you can sleep, then you should place a pillow or two under your hips, not the stomach, to reduce the concaveness in your lower back. In other words, flatten out your back. When lifting, lift with your legs, not with your back. Keep in mind, when you lift, always put your back in the erect position, one foot slightly forward of the other. Doing so causes you to lift with your legs. Carrying heavy objects on one side also creates a strain on the back. Divide the load evenly and carry with both arms. About shoulder bags. Always place a shoulder bag strap across your neck so as to keep the weight of the bag closer to center. As for shoes, high heels can be murder on your back. The higher the heel, the more it throws your pelvis forward, again creating a concaveness in your lower back. Flat heel shoes are best. But if you must wear high-heeled shoes, the height of the heel should never be more than one inch above the sole of the shoe. An excellent source for further information on good back habits is the book Backache Relief, published by Times Books. Before you get into the exercise program, let me explain why these particular exercises are so effective when others have often failed to produce improvement. You notice that there are three categories of exercise in the program. First, there are those that will relax the muscles. Second, there are those that make your muscles more flexible. Finally, some of the exercises will add strength. The sequence of the exercises, the length of time devoted to each, has proven time and again to provide maximum effectiveness. Every day will begin and end with relaxation exercises. Unless you relax, your muscles will be tense and tight, and it will be very difficult to help them. And when you relax, we'll get rid of the mental stress and tension, which may be triggering your back pain. When you relax, we can move on to the flexibility exercises. The reason for this is very simple and basic. You can stretch a muscle a lot more effectively if it's first relaxed. These exercises lengthen your most important posture muscles so that you can carry and move your body more efficiently. After a while, we'll incorporate exercises to strengthen your abdominal muscles. What's interesting to note here is that back problems are seldom caused by weak back muscles. What happens is that weak abdominal muscles cause your back muscles to work overtime in trying to maintain the upright erect position. They soon become fatigued, which leads to soreness and pain. Now you get the most out of this exercise program if you follow a few simple guidelines. Give yourself enough time to do the exercise and avoid tension-producing distractions. If you're going to do them in the morning, wait until you've been out of bed a while and have gotten rid of the early morning stiffness. All exercises should be done smoothly, without jerking or straining. If you're having a very busy or stressful day and are eager to get on with other things, doing these exercises correctly without rushing will make the rest of your day happier and more productive. In fact, you may wish to do them twice a day, especially during the first two weeks, and I recommend that very highly. If you're involved in other sports activities, stop them until you complete this course. It may seem like a sacrifice, but I've seen countless cases where these types of activities caused or worsened back problems. When you resume these activities, you'll probably find that these exercises made you better at it. Last and most important, don't do any exercise which produces discomfort. You can try it again a week later, but if the discomfort persists, just skip that exercise. Over the next six weeks, we'll build up to a total of 16 different exercises. You'll be starting with six exercises, which you should do once or twice daily for the next two weeks. Then we'll add four exercises, and you'll be doing all 10 for the following two weeks. Finally, we'll move up to the full 16 back exercises and the complete six-week program. In each session, we'll start with exercise one, work our way up, then reverse the order and work our way back down, ending with exercise one.
Although results vary with different people, you will probably begin to notice improvement at the second or third week. After completing the course, you're almost certain to have achieved total or substantial pain relief, greater ease of movement, and certainly you'll feel less stressed. In short, you should be on the way to living a better life. If you stay in shape by continuing to exercise, you'll have little fear of another crippling back pain attack. Again, let me remind you, you should consult your physician before beginning this program. And although the course is laid out over six weeks, you should proceed at a slower pace if you don't feel ready to move on. Most of you will find the exercises very easy to do, especially those in section one. And you might wonder whether something so easy could possibly help your back. Also, because you want the quickest possible relief, you might be tempted to move ahead faster than the pace we have set. This will not help you, and it might even aggravate your back problem. Remember, the chances are that you developed a bad back after years of increasing weakness and tension in your muscles. The problem simply won't go away overnight. Experience and follow-up tests show, however, that over four out of five of those who conscientiously while the program, just as it's presented here, have good results in just six weeks or less. If you keep it up, the odds are even better that you'll have a life free of back pain no matter how much and how long you've suffered in the past. Now let's get ready for the first exercise session. Now if you're ready, we'll begin session one of your exercise program. Take your shoes off. Position yourself on the mat in the basic position. Both knees bent, arms at your side, eyes closed, relax. Listen and concentrate on my voice. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Slide one leg out. Slide it back. Slide the other leg out and slide it back. Take another deep breath and let it go. Stretch the fingers, stretch, let go. Stretch harder this time, stretch, let go. Tighten your fist, tighten, let go. Tighten and let go. Take another deep breath and let it go. Slide one leg out, slide it back, slide the other leg out and slide it back. Take another deep breath. And let it go. Now tighten your fists. Now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, cough. Take a deep breath. And let it all go. Raise one arm at elbow and let it drop. Raise the other arm at the elbow and let it drop. Now shrug the shoulder, shrug, let go. Shrug, let go, shrug, and let go. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly roll your head over to the other side. Don't force it, just let the weight of the head carry it from side to side. Back over again. And again. Once more, all the way over. And again. And again. Return head to center. Take a deep breath 
and let it go. Bring one knee to shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide it back, other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back, other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide out, and slide back. Again, other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide it back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide out, and slide back. Take a deep breath. and let it go. Now roll over onto your side, into the fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your other arm resting on the hip. Bring your legs up to almost a 90 degrees to the upper torso. Take a deep breath. and let it go. Top leg, slide it up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out along the bottom leg, slide the leg back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Once again, slide up toward the shoulder, Slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your other side, into the same fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your other arm on your hip. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out along the bottom leg, slide the leg back. Once again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out, slide back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, Slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your stomach, forehead resting comfortably on your hands, toes turned inward. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Tighten the seat muscles. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over on your side into the fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your other arm resting on your hip. Legs are at almost 90 degrees to the upper torso. Take a deep breath and let it go. Top leg, 
slide up toward the shoulder, slide out along the bottom leg, and slide it back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out, slide back. Once more up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your other side into the same fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, other arm on your hip. Take a deep breath and let it go. Top leg, dead weight, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide it back. Once more, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out, slide back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Now roll over onto your back into the basic position. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Bring one knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide out, slide back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, to floor, slide out, and slide back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, Slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide out, slide back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide out, and slide back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly and smoothly roll it over to the other side. Back over again as though it were a stone on the bottom of the ocean floor being swept back and forth by the currents. Back over again. And again, don't force it. Just let the weight of the head carry you from side to side back over again and again and again return head to center take a deep breath and let it go now shrug the shoulder shrug let go Shrug, let go, shrug, and let go. Take another deep breath, and let it go. Now tighten the fists, now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf. Take a deep breath and let it all go. Just feel the tensions oozing out of the body. Once more, take a deep breath and let it go. 
Tighten the fists. Make them tighter. Now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, cough. Take a deep breath and hold it. And let it all go. Raise one arm at elbow. Let it drop. Raise other arm at elbow. And let it drop. Take another deep breath. And let it go. You relax now, pleasantly tired, feeling very comfortable. This is the end of section one, which you should repeat daily for the next two weeks. Twice a day if you can work it in your schedule, which is even better. Now turn off the tape and rewind to the beginning of this section in preparation for your next exercise session. This is section two of the six-week program, and we'll be adding some new exercises to those you've already mastered. If you've spent a full two weeks on section one, you may already be feeling better, and you're now ready to begin this section. Before starting, you will need to have a chair at hand because we'll be using it in one of the exercises. Now let's assume the basic position both knees bent, arms at your side. Remember, keep your eyes closed, listen and concentrate on my voice. In other words, relax. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Slide one leg out, slide it back, slide the other leg out, and slide it back. Take another deep breath, and let it go. Stretch the fingers, stretch, let go. Tighten fists, let go. Raise one arm at elbow, let it drop. Raise other arm at elbow, and let it drop. Take another deep breath, and let it go. Slide one leg out, slide it back. Slide the other leg out, and slide it back. Take another deep breath and let it go. Now tighten your fists. Now the forearms, biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf. Take a deep breath and let it all go. Now shrug the shoulders, shrug, let go, shrug, let go, shrug, and let go. Take a deep breath, and let it go.
Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly roll your head over to the other side. Continuously roll your head from side to side. Don't force it. Back over again. And again, all the way over. Smoothly and slowly. Back over again. And again. Once more, all the way over. Return head to center. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Bring one knee to shoulder. Return foot to floor. Slide the leg out. Slide it back. Other knee up toward the shoulder. Return foot to floor. Slide the leg out. Slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder. Foot to floor. Slide the leg out. Slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder. Foot to floor. Slide out. And slide back. Again, other knee up toward the shoulder. Return foot to floor. Slide the leg out. Slide it back. Other knee up toward the shoulder. Return foot to floor. Slide out. And slide back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your side. Into the fetal position. Head resting comfortably on the underarm your other arm on your hip. Take a deep breath and let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, Slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your other side into the fetal position again, head resting comfortably on the underarm. Place your other arm on your hip. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out, slide it back. Once more up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out along the bottom leg, slide the leg back. Again up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your stomach, forehead resting comfortably on your hands, toes turned inward. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Tighten his seat muscles, tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. And let go. Take a deep breath. 
and let it go. Now roll over onto your back into the basic position. You can now have your eyes open for the next few exercises. The next one is a double knee flex, done slowly. Bring both knees up toward the shoulders. Slowly return feet to floor. Once more, raise and lower. Again, lift and return feet to floor. Now roll over onto your hands and knees for the next exercise called the cat back. Your arms remain stationary, as do your legs. All movement takes place in your back, head and seat. Slowly lower your head, hump the back and bring the seat in, tuck the pelvis in. Now reverse, slowly raise your head, lower your back, stick out the seat, creating a U in the low back. Once more, slowly lower your head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower your back. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in, tuck the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, stick out the seat, and lower your back. Now over onto your back, into the basic position for the next exercise, which is a half sit up. Start with your hands at the base of your thigh. Now take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, chin against the chest, curl up toward the knees, fingertips at top of knee. Uncurl as you go back down and relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhaling as you curl up, fingertips to top of knees. Back down. And let go of the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, bring fingertips to top of knees. Back down, relax at the shoulders. Now roll over onto your side. Move over to the chair for the chair bending exercise. Sit forward in the chair, legs apart wide enough so that your shoulders can drop down between the knees. Forearms resting on thigh. Let's begin. Chin against the chest, droop and sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose, let the head hang down. Uncurl as you come back up to the full upright erect sitting position, forearms resting on thigh. Once more, chin against the chest, droop, sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can. Don't force it. Uncurl as you come back up, full upright position, forearms on thigh. Once again, chin against the chest, Group and sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose. Now uncurl as you come back up to the full upright position. Now let's move over to the mat. Assume the basic position for the half sit up. Hands at the base of your thigh. Now take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, bring fingertips to top of knees. Back down slowly, relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, fingertips to top of knees. 
back down, let go in the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhaling as you curl up, fingertips to top of knee. Back down. And let go in the shoulders. Now over onto your hands and knees for the cat back exercise. Let's begin. Lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, slowly raise your head, stick out the seat, lower the back. Come down as far as you comfortably can with your low back. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower the back. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower the back down as far as you comfortably can. Now move over onto your back into the basic position for the double knee flex exercise. Remember, these are done slowly. Bring both knees up toward the shoulder. Return feet slowly to floor. Once more, raise and lower. Again, lift. Return feet to floor. Now roll over onto your stomach. Forehead resting comfortably on your hands. Toes inward. Now close your eyes, listen and concentrate on my voice. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Tighten the seat muscles, tighten, let go. Tighten, let go. Tighten, let go. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your side into the fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your other arm on your hip. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out. Slide it back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide out. Slide back. Once more, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out. Slide the leg back. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your other side into the fetal position. Get comfortable. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Once more, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide it back. Once more, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, Slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your back into the basic position. Remember, keep your eyes closed. Listen, concentrate on my voice. 
take a deep breath and let it go. Bring one knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, to floor, slide out, slide back. Other knee to shoulder, floor, slide out, and slide back. Again, other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide it back. Other knee to shoulder, floor, slide out, and slide back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly roll your head over to the other side. Don't force it. Back over again. Slowly and continuously roll your head from side to side. Let the weight of the head carry it. Back over again. And again. Once more all the way over. And again. And again. Return head to center. Take another deep breath. And let it go. Now shrug the shoulders. Shrug. Let go. Shrug. Let go. Shrug. And let go. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Now extend one arm overhead resting on the floor. Extend the other arm overhead resting on the floor. Slide one leg out. Now the other. Now stretch your body alternating side to side. Stretch, 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 stretch. And let go. Slide one leg back. Slide the other leg back. Bring one arm down, resting on the hip. Now the other arm. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Let one arm slide off your hip onto the floor. And now the other. Slide one leg out. Slide it back. Slide the other leg out and slide it back. Take another deep breath and let it go. Tighten your fists. Now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf. Take a deep breath and let it all go. Once more, tighten the fists, now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf, take a deep breath and hold it, and let it all go. You're relaxed, comfortable, pleasantly tired. another deep breath and let it go
This is the end of section two of your exercise program. Stick with these exercises for the next two weeks. Once a day is sufficient. Okay, rewind the tape, and I'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations. You've completed two-thirds of the program, and you're probably feeling somewhat better. Maybe a whole lot better. No matter how you're doing, stick with it, except for those exercises that may cause you discomfort. In the final session, we'll introduce you to some new exercises. Repeat them all daily for the next two weeks. Okay, everyone. Assume the basic position. Arms at your side. Both knees bent. Eyes closed. Relax. Listen and concentrate on my voice. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Slide one leg out. Slide it back. Slide the other leg out and slide it back. Take another deep breath. And let it go. Stretch the fingers, stretch. Let go. Tighten fists, tighten. Let go. Slide one leg out. Slide it back. Slide the other leg out and slide it back. Take another deep breath. And let it go. Tighten your fists. Now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, cough. Take a deep breath. And let it all go. Raise one arm at elbow, let it drop. Raise the other arm at elbow, and let it drop. Take another deep breath. And let it go. Now shrug the shoulder, shrug. Let go. Shrug. Let go. Shrug. And let go. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly roll your head over to the other side. Continue rolling your head from side to side as though it were a stone on the bottom of the ocean floor being swept back and forth by the tides and the currents. Back over again and again all the way over. Once more all the way over and again. Return head to center. Take a deep breath and let it go. Bring one knee to shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide it back. Bring other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide it back. Again, other knee up toward the shoulder, floor, slide out, slide back, other knee to shoulder, floor, slide out, and slide back, other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back, other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now roll over onto your side into the fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your 
your other arm on your hip, both knees almost 90 degrees to the upper torso. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Top leg. Slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out along the bottom leg. Slide the leg back. Once again, up toward the shoulder, slide out, slide back, again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out, and slide back. Now roll over onto the other side into the same fetal position. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out. Slide it back. Again, up toward the shoulder. Slide out. And slide back. Once again, up toward the shoulder. Slide out and slide back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your stomach. Forehead resting on your hands. Toes turned inward. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Tighten his seat muscles. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. And let go. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Okay, now move over onto your back into the basic position for the double knee flex exercise. Your eyes can now be open. Done slowly, bring both knees up toward the shoulders. Return feet to floor. Once more, raise and lower. Again, lift. Return feet to floor. Now move over onto your hands and knees for the cat back exercise. Done slowly. Now lower your head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in, tuck in the pelvis. Now reverse slowly, raise your head, lower your back and stick out your seat. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower your back, stick out the seat. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower the back. Over onto your back, into the basic position, for the half sit up. Hands at the base of your thigh. Take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up to a half sitting position. Bring fingertips to top of knees. Back down. Relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you come up. Fingertips to top of knees. Back down, let go at the shoulders. One more time, take a deep breath. Exhaling as you come up. Back down, relax at the shoulders. Now roll over on your side and come over to the chair for the bending forward chair exercise. 
Sit forward in the chair, legs apart, hands resting on your thigh, chin against the chest, droop, sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up to the full upright erect position, forearms resting on thigh. Once again, chin against the chest, droop and sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can, hold hang couple three seconds. Now uncurl as you come back up to the full upright sitting position. Once again, chin against the chest, droop, sag at the shoulders, bend forward, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up to the full upright, erect sitting position. Now move over to the mat. Assume the basic position for the half sit-up. Hands resting on your abdomen. Take a deep breath. Now curl up to a half sitting position slowly. Uncurl as you go back down slowly. Relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, half sitting position. Uncurl as you go back down. Let go at the shoulders. Once again, take a deep breath. Exhaling as you curl up to a half sitting position. Back down. Relax at the shoulders. Now roll over onto your side and come over to the chair for the side bending chair exercise. Again, sit forward in the chair. This time your legs are together, arms resting on your thighs. Now bend forward to one side, hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up, slide your hands across your thighs and come down to the other side. Go down as far as you comfortably can, don't strain. Uncurl as you come back up and over, slide your hands across your thigh, come down to the other side, hang loose. Back up, uncurling as you come back up, slide your hands and come down to the other side. Once more, back up and over and down to the other side. And one more time, uncurl as you come back up. Now come down to the other side. Hang loose. Now come back up to the full upright erect position. Now move over to the mat. Assume the basic position for the hamstring stretch exercise. Think of this exercise as though you were pedaling a bicycle. Bring one knee to shoulder, extend leg to ceiling, pointing toe, locking knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend leg to ceiling, pointing toe, locking knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend, point the heel, lock the knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee to shoulder, extend, point the heel, lock the knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend, point toe, lock knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend, point toe, lock knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend, point heel, lock knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other knee up toward the shoulder, extend, point heel, lock knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. 
back to the other knee, up toward the shoulder, extend, point the toe, lock the knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide it back. Other knee, up toward the shoulder, extend, point toe, lock knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide it back. Other knee, up toward the shoulder, extend, point the heel, lock the knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide it back. Other knee to shoulder, extend, point the heel, lock the knee, lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Now roll over onto your side, come up into a standing position. Legs apart, about the width of your shoulders, hands behind your back and resting on your back. Keep knees locked. Now bend forward at the waist, keep your head up, come down as far as you comfortably can. Now bend your knees as you come back up to the full upright position. Once more, bend forward at the waist, keep your head up, come down as far as you comfortably can. Now bend your knees as you stand up. Once again, bend forward at the waist, keep your head up, come down as far as you comfortably can. Now bend your knees as you stand up. Now limber your legs. Bring legs together, knees locked, for the toe touch exercise. Chin against the chest, droop sag at the shoulders, keep your knees locked, come down as far as you comfortably can, don't strain. Now bend your knees as you come up to a full upright standing position. Limber the legs once more. And again, bring legs together, knees locked. Chin against the chest, droop and sag at the shoulders. Again, come down as far as you comfortably can. Don't strain, hang loose. Bend your knees as you come back up to the full upright standing position. Limber legs. Once more, bring legs together. Chin against the chest, droop, sag at the shoulders. Now bend forward at the waist, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose. Bend your legs, you come back up, full upright standing position. Now move over to the mat for the next hamstring stretching exercise. Slide one leg out, lock knee, point toe. Raise straight leg as high as you can without bending knee. Do not kick, do it slowly, lower straight leg to floor. Slide the leg back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point toe. Raise straight leg as high as you can. Lower straight leg to floor. Slide the leg back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point the heel. Raise straight leg without kicking. Lower straight leg to floor, slide the leg back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point the heel, raise, lower, and slide back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point toe. Raise straight leg as high as you can. Lower straight leg to floor, slide it back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point toe, raise, lower, and slide back. Other leg slide out, point heel, lock knee, raise, lower, and slide back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point heel, raise, straight leg as high as you can, lower straight leg to floor, slide it back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point toe, raise straight leg as high as you can, lower straight leg to floor, Slide it back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point toe, raise, lower, and slide back. Other leg slide out, lock knee, point heel, raise, lower, slide back. Other leg slide out, point the heel, lock knee, raise, lower, and slide back. Now roll over onto your side and over to the chair for the side bending chair exercise. Again, sit forward in the chair. This time your legs are together, arms resting on your thighs. 
Now bend forward to one side. Hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up. Slide your hands across your thighs and come down to the other side. Go down as far as you comfortably can. Don't strain. Uncurl as you come back up and over. Slide your hands across your thigh. Come down to the other side. Hang loose. Back up. Uncurling as you come back up. Slide your hands and come down to the other side. Once more, back up and over and down to the other side. One more time. Uncurl as you come back up. Now come down to the other side. Hang loose. Now come back up to the full upright erect position. Now move over to the mat. Assume the basic position for the half sit up. Hands resting on your abdomen. Take a deep breath. Now curl up to a half sitting position slowly. Uncurl as you go back down slowly. Relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, half sitting position. Uncurl as you go back down. Let go at the shoulders. Once again, take a deep breath, exhaling as you curl up to a half sitting position, back down, relax at the shoulders. Now roll over onto your side and come over to the chair for the bending forward chair exercise. Sit forward in the chair, legs apart, hands resting on your thigh. Chin against the chest. Group, sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist. Come down as far as you comfortably can. Hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up to the full upright erect position. Forearms resting on thigh. Once again, chin against the chest. Group and sag at the shoulders, bend forward at the waist. Come down as far as you comfortably can. Hold hang, couple three seconds. Now uncurl as you come back up to the full upright sitting position. Once again, chin against the chest, droop, sag at the shoulders, bend forward, come down as far as you comfortably can, hang loose. Uncurl as you come back up to the full upright erect sitting position. Now move over to the mat. Basic position. Hands at the base of your side for the half set up. Now take a deep breath. Exhale as you curl up, fingertips to top of knees. Uncurl as you go back down. Relax at the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhaling as you curl up, fingertips to top of knee. Uncurl as you go back down. Let go on the shoulders. Once more, take a deep breath. Exhale as you come up. Back down. Relax at the shoulders. Now move over onto your hands and knees for the cat back exercise. Done slowly. Lower head, hump the back, tuck the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower your back down as far as you comfortably can. Once more, lower head, hump the back, bring the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower the back. One more time, lower head, hump the back, tuck the pelvis in. Now reverse, raise your head, lower your back. Now over onto your back, into the basic position for the double knee flex exercise, done slowly.
Bring both knees up toward the shoulders. Return feet to floor. Once again, raise. And lower. Again, lift. Return feet to floor. Now roll over onto your stomach. Forehead resting on your hands. Toes inward. Now close your eyes. Listen, concentrate on my voice. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now tighten the seat muscles. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Tighten. Let go. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your side into the fetal position. Head resting comfortably on the underarm. Your other arm resting on the hip. Knees up to almost 90 degrees to the torso. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Top leg slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out along the bottom leg. Slide it back. Once again, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out. Slide it back. Once more, slide up toward the shoulder. Slide the leg out. Slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Now roll over onto the other side into the same fetal position, head resting comfortably on the underarm, your other hand resting on the hip. Take a deep breath, and let it go. Top leg, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide out, slide back. Again, slide up toward the shoulder, slide the leg out, slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now roll over onto your back into the basic position. deep breath and let it go bring one knee up toward the shoulder return foot to floor slide the leg out slide it back other knee up toward the shoulder foot to floor slide out and slide back other knee up toward the shoulder Return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back, other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide out, and slide back, other knee up toward the shoulder, return foot to floor, slide the leg out, slide the leg back, other knee up toward the shoulder, foot to floor, slide the leg out, Slide the leg back. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Now let your head fall to one side. Slowly roll your head over to the other side. Don't force it. Just let the weight of the head carry it from side to side. Back over again. And again, once more, bring it over to the other side, and again, and again, once more all the way over, return head to center.
take a deep breath and let it go. Now shrug the shoulder, shrug, let go. Shrug, let go. Shrug, and let go. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Extend one arm overhead, resting on the floor. Now the other arm. Slide one leg out. Now the other leg. Now stretch your body side to side. Stretch, 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 stretch. And let go. Slide one leg back. Slide the other leg back. Bring one arm down, resting on the hip. Now the other arm. Take a deep breath. And let it go. Let both arms fall off your hip onto the floor. Now tighten the fists. Now the forearms, biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf. Take a deep breath and let it all go. Once more, tighten the fists, now the forearms, your biceps, chest, stomach, thigh, calf. Take a deep breath and hold it. And let it all go. You're relaxed now, pleasantly tired, very comfortable. Take another deep breath. You've now completed all the exercises. Keep it up for the next two weeks and you will be an official graduate of the course. It's a good idea to keep doing the exercises to preserve the benefits you have already achieved. If you still have some back discomfort, continue the program and then you soon will be able to resume those activities you set aside while you are doing the course. Keep up the good work and you should soon have a life free of back pain.